Right, so in this uh, video we're going to start to look at, if you like, the AQA syllabus Unit 1 and in particular in that unit, Parliamentary Lawmaking. And uh, this video is the first of a short series on the influences on Parliament. And AQA asks you to look at what are the things that influence, who are the people that influence Parliament when it makes statute. And it looks at three key areas. It looks at the Law Commission, it looks at pressure groups and it looks at media. And I will do a video on each of those. Um, and I'll also do a video on political parties because I think that's important just to spend some time looking at too. But in this case, we're going to spend some time looking at how the Law Commission influences Parliament when Parliament makes statute. So, as always, we'll start with some terms of reference. Um, what do we mean by the Law Commission? Where did it come from? And the Law Commission is um, um, an independent, permanent, which means that it sits all of the time, full-time, so everybody that is there has full-time jobs working for the Law Commission, body that reviews the law. And the Law Commission is set up under the Law Commission Act 1965. It was created in 1965 as a result of this piece of statute. And this piece of statute very clearly says what the Law Commission was supposed to do. Because in section 3, subsection 1, so section 3, subsection 1 of the Law Commission's Act 1965, it very clearly states that the job of the Law Commission is to keep under review all of the law. And it does that, it keeps under review all of the law by appointing to its staff some very senior people. It has five commissioners and of those five commissioners, oh okay I spelled that wrong, of those five commissioners there is one chairman by chairman obviously it means chairman or chairwoman and the chairman or woman is a high court judge always and they have four so one chairman plus four others four commissioners and the four commissioners are either very very clever legal academics or practicing barristers of, of a high standing and each of those five commissioners have a team working for them so each one will have a team of um, very qualified people working for them, keeping under review all of the law. They'll be looking at the law all of the time and looking to see how they can make the law of the land better. Now, they do that in three main ways. They do it by codifying the law, by consolidating the law, by repealing the law, and all of those three things together lead to a modernization of the law. They bring the law up to date um, to make sure that the laws by which we are governed are current and suit the needs that we want them for. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at each of these three areas in turn and see how precisely the Law Commission can help to influence Parliament when it makes statute. Before we go on to that, I just want to say very clearly, if you are answering a question on the Law Commission, pretty much here is your answer. What I would suggest that you do is you state that the Law Commission is an independent, permanent, full-time body whose job is to review the law. That it's set up by the Law Commissions Act in 1965 and under Section 3, Subsection 1, its job is to keep under review all of the law. It does that with five commissioners, all highly qualified, the chairman, who is a high court judge, and four others, each of whom have a team working for them. It will then look at the law by either codifying it, consolidating it, repealing it, and then subsequently modernising it, and spend a little bit of time talking about each of these in turn. And in that, in a nutshell, providing that you expand on these three, is your 10 mark answers. You can't fail to get maximum marks by including all of those things. So let's have a look at codification then. Codification, in short, means bringing together in one act of statute. Bringing together in one act of parliament. Okay, now, codification essentially means making a rule, making a rule formal, writing something down, stating it very clearly. And I'm going to look at 
how we do that and what is meant by that um, by looking particularly a moment at the law on murder and homicide. But in short, as I've said, it means bringing together all of the law on a particular topic into one act of parliament. At the start, when it was um, designed, it was supposed to simplify contract law, landlord and tenant law, family law and the law of evidence. But its remit has expanded a little bit. And as I say, the example I'm going to use is the, the case of criminal law and murder and homicide. Now, if we take, for instance, um, sorry, in 1989, the Law Commission decided that it wanted to look at the entire criminal code and perhaps codify, bring into one act of parliament, the entire criminal law. And of course, that was just far too large. And so it decided that it would narrow it down and focus it onto one key area in criminal law terms. And in 2006, the Law Commission started to look at murder and homicide in particular. Now, if we take murder, for instance, murder is a, um, a piece of common law. The definition for murder is a common law definition created in the 18th century. Voluntary manslaughter was controlled by the 1957 Homicide Act. Case law has developed since the 18th century, changing and um, building and making some, having some huge amounts of impact on the law of murder and homicide. Some very famous academic writers have looked at and analysed and criticised the law on murder and homicide and um, their writings and their ideas have become very influential. Judges have made decisions, decisions obiter um, that have had influence. And so what we have is a number of different areas in which the law in this area is um, constructed. It could be statute, it could be common law through cases. There is influence placed on the law in this area, perhaps by academics. And so what codification does is it takes all of those different strands and it brings them all into a single act of parliament. And what the Law Commission wanted to do, as an example, is they wanted to look at the law around murder and homicide. And as I said, they started that in 2006. And that led to their report on murder, manslaughter and infanticide. And murder, manslaughter and infanticide report led to the Coroners and Justice Act 2009, which looked at specifically diminished responsibility and um, what was provocation under the old Homicide Act, but now became loss of control. So you can see how it took all of the law in this area and it was able to... Um, bring it into a single act of parliament. Now that's slightly different to consolidation. Consolidation means bring in many acts of parliament or statute and I know that my writing is bad. So it brings many acts of parliament or statute into one act of parliament. So whereas codification was bringing all sorts of areas of the law, case law, um, academic law, into one Act of Parliament, consolidation brings many Acts of Parliament into one Act of Parliament. And it does that in order to make the law more understandable and accessible. And the good part about this in terms of speed is it does not require changes in the law. It just brings it together. A good example of this which is why we've got students sitting um, exams, was the Education Act of 1996. That acts like a filter, or a funnel, I should say. So you have lots and lots and lots, or you have some statute going in, and one Act of Parliament coming out, the Education Act. Okay, It does require constant updating, and that's partly due to judges and the government adding or interpreting the law soon after it comes into effect. But nevertheless, the consolidation element brings all of the um, Acts of Parliament on a particular area into one single Act of Parliament. Repeal is very simple. The statute books are full of um, old law, and some of that law is not very good. And so what repeal does is it removes that law that's of no further use. So if there is a law that is of no further use, 
it is repealed, it is removed from the statute books. And once a Act of Parliament is passed, it can generally only be repealed or altered by another Act. So in order for a repeal to happen, there needs to be another Act to get rid of that um, Act of Parliament. So how does it work then? How does the Law Commission work? Well, essentially, the Law Commission can receive or can start to look at areas of the law from three main areas. It can self-investigate. So it can investigate by itself. It can look at an area of law and think, we think this needs updating. And they can go off and do some work. Alternatively, Parliament can direct the Law Commission to carry out a piece of work on its behalf. And the third area would be the um, academics. So, for instance, academics might be writing and talking consistently about an area of the law that they think needs changing. And because of the influence of some of these academics, the Law Commission can very often start to look at the law in a particular area. And a good example of this is the, cr is the Criminal Attempts Act. 1981. So the Law Commission helps to influence Parliament to create the law, the Criminal Attempts Act 1981, as a result of some of the work that academics were doing around this area. And the way in which it works is that the Law Commission will carry out some research, they will then write a working paper. That working paper will be the the starting point for consultation between, normally, Parliament, academics, members of the Law Commission, members of the judiciary, members of the legal profession, before eventually writing a report. And it's the report that goes to MPs and Parliament in order to look as to whether or not the work of the Law Commission is going to be taken on board and created and made into new law. And that's essentially it. That is your area. That tells you what the Law Commission is, how it was started, how it works, the three main areas that it does um, work, consolidation, codification and repeal, and then how it operates, where it gets its, um, where it gets its requests from and the process in which that it puts that together. What I want to look at finally is just what the um, advantages and disadvantages are. Now, this won't be part of your main question. This will always be, in AQA terms, what you will need to write about for the third part of a question, the evaluate, the advantages and disadvantages part. And what I've tried to do is I've tried to be very, very clear to give you a, um, a memory aid for each of these. And I've put the advantages down and I've used the word miser and I've got Ebenezer Scrooge here. The first advantage of the Law Commission is that it makes good law. It is able to be thorough. It can spend lots and lots of time. Um, it's well informed and therefore it can produce good law. Things aren't done quickly. The second is that it is independent. The mere fact that it's independent away from government means that it can look away from political bias at particular areas. So it can look at law in a way that is important to us as a nation state, not necessarily important to the political party that wants to introduce it. The third advantage is it can start investigations itself. It doesn't have to wait for Parliament to tell it. What it can do is to very clever people can see an area of the law that requires looking at and they can go ahead and investigate that themselves. The fourth area is it is full of experts. As we've already said, the chairman is a high court judge. Each of his or her commissioners are very accomplished academics or practicing lawyers. So there's a huge amount of expertise that they can apply to the problems and the areas in which they look. And thirdly, it carries out a large amount of research. Lots and lots of areas of the law are researched and advanced because of the work that the Law Commission does. So those are our five advantages for the Law Commission. 
and I've used the acronym, the acronym um, MISER. Makes good law, it's independent, it's allowed to self-investigate, it has huge amounts of expertise and it carries out lots and lots of research. However, there are a number of disadvantages and I've used the acronym COLLI, obviously without the E, but I'm just trying to find a way in which I could help you remember that. Um, little picture of Lassie there. And the disadvantages for the Law Commission are that it does not have to consult. The government has no um, obligation at all to consult when or how it implements law. If it wants to introduce a new piece of law, it can do so without having to go to the um, Law Commission. The second disadvantage is it has no obligation to follow what the Law Commission suggests. So the Law Commission may do two or three years worth of work in a particular area, and if the government doesn't like it or doesn't want to um, instigate it, it has no obligation to do so. The third is that investigations are lengthy. They take a long time to come to fruition. Um, some can be years being looked at and by that stage a, a government may have moved on and a new government is in that has a completely different set of objectives on its manifesto. The fourth area is that because they take on a great amount of work, there can sometimes be a lack of thoroughness. So it's a almost a double-edged sword, whereas they've got huge amounts of expertise and they've got that expertise allows good law to be made, there is also the possibility that there's a lack of thoroughness. And thirdly, not only does the government uh, not have to consult and it is under completely um, no obligation to carry out any recommendations about a third so about one third of all law commission work not is not implemented so implemented so what that essentially says is that a third of its work is almost wasted all right so let's run over those again the government doesn't have to consult the law commission when it starts to look at new legislation if the law commission looks at an area of the law the government's under no obligation to um, follow what the law commission suggests the law commission spends a great deal of time looking at these issues and so therefore some of the research it carries out is very long and very lengthy and takes a lot of time because it takes on a huge amount of work, sometimes there's a chance that there can be a lack of thoroughness. And finally, about a third of everything that the Law Commission does is never implemented at all. So that's a third of wasted effort. So there we go, that's the Law Commission. Nice, simple, straightforward, very easy. Nice, easy question to get yourself 10 full marks on.